episode 2909 back for another episode of reading the wrong way so i didn't get to do my christmas video but i'm hoping to do it in december because it really was a really great manga that i think you'd probably enjoy so instead today we're going to do a triple threat with the cirque de freak series uh, i'm going to try to suppress my love of larton krebsley because he's my favorite character so um, this is a popular book series, but it's also a graphic novel series, and it has a movie out, so it's kind of open to all sorts of different people that like all sorts of different things. So I'd like to welcome you to the world of the Cirque du Freak. I'll start with the original book series. There are 12 books that come in many different shapes and sizes. I personally like the little box sets. They're just very tiny, and the books fit very nicely in a purse or a backpack. Uh, I had to get this other one and the first four in this size, mainly because the box sets were sold out. Since the series is a few years older now, um, you shouldn't have this problem, but if you do, it's the same book, same exact words in every single one. So the main story is about two boys about 12 years old, Darren Shan and his best friend Steve Leonard. They decide to go to an illegal freak show after a mysterious figure gives them the flyer for it. They become entranced in the world, meeting classic freaks like the Wolfman and the Bearded Lady. And Darren is compelled to steal a performing spider he sees there at the show, and when his best friend is poisoned by it, Darren has to be thrown into the world of the vampires to save him. So now he has to learn the ways of the vampires, as well as take down the vampanese and their lord. So what do you need to know about the series? First off, this is nothing like that girly Twilight series. These are real vampires. Does he look friendly and heartthrobbish to you? I think not. Though maybe he does. Uh, they don't glitter in the sunlight, they actually burn to a crisp, after getting a really bad sunburn, um, and they certainly aren't out looking for teenage girls to hook up with. They're more nitty gritty. Uh, they don't exactly follow normal vampire legends though either. They can die with a stake to the heart, but just like humans they can also die from bullets and blades. And they can't turn into bats either. Also, there are two types of bloodsuckers in this series. There are vampires, who I refer to as the good guys. They only take enough blood from their victims to get by. They never kill the humans that they feed from. The vampanese, on the other hand, kill their victims and are extremely bloodthirsty. You can tell them apart from the vampires by their red skin and purple hair. So what do I love about this book? The characters are definitely the high point. There are a lot of characters, but as the series continues, you learn who they are very quickly and you learn to love them all. I think my favorite part about these characters is that for readers that are lonely or sort of outcasts, especially if they're in school, you can sort of feel like these characters are your friends. That's how human and realistic they are, despite the things that essentially make them freaks. And because Darren is new to the world of the vampires, you are essentially growing and learning with him. The story itself is extremely well written, and the plot has so many twists and turns that the reader never knows what's coming next. Especially towards the end of the series, about book 10 through 12, the twists and turns are so unexpected, you really need to pay attention. I also want to mention that the author has released a four-book prequel sequel called The Saga of Larton Krepsley which gives his backstory. Uh, these can be read before or after reading the original series. If you read it after the original series, you'll already know who a lot of the characters are, so you can kind of see how they connect um, a little better. And if you read it before the original series, you'll get to learn how the characters develop and change over time. Um, I'd recommend reading it after the original series, especially if the reader is younger, probably Definitely before middle school, maybe even early middle school, mainly because this four book sequel is a lot darker than the original series. I personally liked reading it after the original series, but it's up to you. Um, just note that the last book of the prequel doesn't come out until May 15th, so you may want to consider that if you're just starting the series. The story is huge, if I haven't already gotten that point across, and it's been translated into a manga format. The manga volumes follow the book series 100%, so volume 1 includes the entire section of the story arc from book 1. The art is wonderful, as you can hopefully see. 
Um, all of the characters were how I imagined them looking, and honestly, seeing some of the scenes from the story visually actually added to my experience when I reread the books. I also want to point out that at the back of the book, if you can see it, it includes the introduction and part of the first chapter to the original series. So, after you're done reading the manga, if you think you might like the story better in normal novel format, you can read that and see which you prefer. Now we get into the area where true loyal fans have a lot of debate. The Cirque du Freak series does have a movie out called The Vampire's Assistant. Um, it's supposed to reflect the first three books of the original series, A Living Nightmare, The Vampire's Assistant, and Tunnels of Blood, but honestly, I don't think it does. Does that mean I hate it? Absolutely not. This is one of my favorite movies. But some fans do. All I'm asking is that if you decide to look into this movie, please watch it with an open mind. I feel it's best to treat this movie sort of as if it's its own story. It does follow the book a bit. Darren and Steve go to the Cirque, Darren steals the spider, Steve is poisoned by the spider, and Darren becomes a vampire to save him. But there are a lot of changes. Probably my biggest problem is that they've changed three of the supporting characters a little too much for my taste. Ever the Snake Boy, featured on the cover of Volume 2, was my second favorite character of the series, only to Larton Krepsley. Uh, he's very cool, very funny, with a really big heart. But in the movie, he's kind of like a poser. He wants to abandon the Cirque and start a music career, which I think is just totally outrageous. This change seriously makes me cringe every time I watch the movie. And then we have Merlo, the Vampanese featured on Volume 3, who doesn't debut until the second book of the series. So I feel that he's kind of out of place in the movie. I almost like him better with his own little story arc. Um, also, they replaced a character that appears later in the series, Debbie, with a new freak named Rebecca. I don't want to ruin too much of the story for you, so let's leave it at Debbie is much better than Rebecca. So, would I recommend these awesome pieces to other people? Definitely. The book series for sure, as well as the manga to everyone. It's a bit of a horror thriller, but it's also sort of a fantasy adventure comedy, so I'm pretty sure a lot of people will like it. Um, I'll say the series does get darker as it progresses, even in the original, um, so you might want to be careful with younger kids. It's recommended usually for middle school, early teens. Um, I would probably put the prequel a little bit higher than that, maybe 16-ish. Um, but honestly, if you think you can read it, go for it. Um, I definitely recommend the movie for all ages. There is a bit of swearing, there's a little bit of violence, but it's a comedy in all honesty. <laughs> um, if you know anyone that wants a good laugh and doesn't take the series too seriously, definitely watch it. Um, if you really enjoy the book religiously, though, you probably won't like the movie. But I say five stars to all four. So now I'll leave you with one of my favorite quotes from none other than my favorite character, Larton Crapsley. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I am so excited to be here in an anonymous small town which used to have character but is now just a bland suburb filled with chain stores and surrounded by slums. It really is a pleasure to be here. And I am so honored that blah, 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 and so on and so forth, etc. ad nauseum. When I was given freedom, oh, all I did was flee when I turned back. Close your toes before I could open mine Now I know, now I see It was a waste of time